Hello there, Seraphim17 once again, introducing you to my Uncharted 3 Crushing Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the 8th level, and this is entitled The Citadel. So, this is a night-based level, and we're going to be sneaking into this, I think it's some kind of museum or some ancient castle in, uh, I think it's Syria, I believe. And this is a challenging mission, this one, this is a, a difficult level. And the reason it's hard is because there's a bunch of firefights you're going to be, be thrown into, and a, and a few of them aren't very fair. A few of, of them are fine, but there's a handful of them that if you don't know what you're doing, you'll get your ass kicked. So the first section is, is pretty simple. You're going to be climbing up this first tower to get into the, the, the first area. And it's all standard Uncharted stuff. You know, just bashing the X button, climbing on the things that look like you could climb on them. And pretty much doing what Altair and Ezio do in the Assassin's Creed games, but the difference being is we're actually pressing buttons as opposed to holding buttons. And then through this room is the first checkpoint and the first firefight of the level. And this one's a tough one because the enemies can flank you, the enemies can climb up that ladder in front of me there and jump across, the enemies can throw grenades up, the enemies will do pretty much anything they can to make your life misery. And you're starting off with the shitty pistol again, the gun I really don't like, so you've just got to pick your shots and just be careful and y your best asset on this fight is your ears because you're going to be able to hear if anybody's running around the only problem is when it gets to the last guy he's going to just sit behind cover and do nothing and you see that guy over there he's got a shotgun so watch out for him I get lucky with the blind fire there I've only got four bullets but I think he just dropped that shotgun on my ledge we'll soon find out getting shot from a guy down there and sometimes the only way to find out where they are is to test the water by sticking your face out sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and especially on this difficulty it seems so random at times there'll be, there'll be moments where you'll take so much damage and moments where you seem to take a lot more damage and there's a couple of sequences that you'll come across later on where you've got to kill some people and, and you've got no cover and it's almost like the game developers knew this was going to be bullshit so they took the damage parameters down a little bit so it's not as intense as it, as, it, as all the other shootouts were but I'll mention which ones they are and um, hopefully you'll, you'll not have any trouble with them but I know there's one guy left here and I can't quite see him so I shoot this there's a grenade so I know he's down at the left I just saw his head then in retrospect, but I apparently didn't see him when I played. There he is. Just lure him out with the explosion, and um, now he's not going to stick his head out now, which is a pain in the ass. And I really like this micro Uzi as well. You'll notice that I preface it over a lot of the pistols. The, the reason for it is, is it's good at long range and close range, and it doesn't look like it should be good at long range, but if you pepper fire it, or if you pop fire it, it's, it's extremely useful. But once you've cleared the room, you move the beam, you let Sully and the others in. It's a perfect opportunity to pick up as much equipment as you can. Get yourself all kitted up. Uh, right now, it doesn't matter if you if you don't have the best guns because there's not going to be any fighting after this room for a, a couple of minutes. And when there is, you're going to be stocked upon a, a bunch of ammo in that room. So you just need to do the tandem door opening business that we've seen ever since Army of Two. Which always baffles me because, especially in a game like this, I know there's a co-op, but there isn't a two-player co-op that follows the full game. So it makes me wonder why everything needs two people to do it. Kind of crazy, especially when you consider what happens if you're on your own. You know, you know, if you're just a dude that works there, if you're just a cleaner that has to go and buff the lawns or something ridiculous. And you, and you go up to one of these doors and there's, there's two of them. You can't stretch that length. You can't put one arm on one and one foot on other. It just wouldn't work. This is not some crazy game, a twister. It's just, I don't know, I don't understand how they can design it when you just couldn't get around on your own, it would suck, but jump onto the bucket, he's going to lower you into this area, and then when you, this is weird, this, because it looks like it wants you to jump to the platform, but it actually wants you to drop into the water so you can see this angle, there you go, a nice cinematic low shot, and um, now there's going to be a little bit of a stealth sequence, so I'm going to go a little bit quieter. And these, no, I'm not really. These guys are going to come from out of that area, and he's going to stand next to this. And I'm pretty sure if you if you climb onto the wall, you can probably pull him over like a ledge takedown. But I always climb up and beat him up because it works just as well. And as long as when you kill them, you see that ninja icon. The ninja icon generally means I think that you've you've can, you've done it stealthily. If they drop the gun and it's got the ninja symbol, it means that it was an unnoticed death. I do believe. I could be wrong, like I say, I'm not the biggest Uncharted fan, I'm not the biggest, well, Uncharted player really, because I've not had that much time with them, but I do like the series 
and then once you've killed those guys, you just climb up these lovely rocks, and then you get to, to shoot some padlocks. Up, it's been a while since I shot a padlock, I'll say that much. There you go. And that's another interesting game design with, with padlocks and things. The whole shooting something to get through, and it seems like such a binary, such a, a simple premise, but it's still in games development today. And I know it's not a massive, you know, like, you do a 20 minutes level just to shoot a padlock, mission successful. I know it's nothing stupid like that, but still, we, we've come this far and we're still twisting valves and we're still shooting padlocks. It makes me wonder when we're going to completely get to a, a complete new, you know, direction of of how to trigger events because right now we seem to on most games just run forward and trip those invisible lines and then that gets you to the next sequence and it makes me wonder how it's going to evolve when when the next bunch of consoles come out and we've got a whole lot more power and a whole lot more room to do more creative things and I mean talking of power and creative things the the tanker level on this if you don't know I was watching a behind scenes on it and originally what they wanted to do, Naughty Dog, to, to do the level is they wanted to simulate the, the the tanker turning over and just pretty much fake it with animation. <clears throat> and what they mean by this is to turn the boat over in the water as if it's been done by the sea but they just do it all purely based on the animations. And it's not what they did. They actually went and designed a, a fully functioning physical sea. So that everything that's happening is happening in real events and it's all being controlled by the water and not by a preset animation, which is just fascinating to me. Absolutely fascinating. But back to the shootout anyhow, because this is a pretty challenging one. Uh, I would implore you not to drop down. You can drop down and you'll, it'll probably work just fine, but you're a lot easier to kill down there than you are up here. And you can use these, these lovely towers to, and these lovely windows to shoot the sniper guys across the way. And in there, I just couldn't hit him, and I try. I try it a lot, and I just can't seem to, to, to pepper him, even though he's, he's full on there, and my reticle's on him. But he, he doesn't like taking damage him, so stay up here until you've cleared out all the towers. Uh, there's generally about four or five guys, it all depends, and more will spawn when you move forward. You'll just have to be conscious of that fact. But as soon as you're confident that you've killed enough people from up here, drop down, go straight into cover, and then just push your way around the corner. This is one of those fights where if you run out of corner, for instance, if I were to hop over that, that wall in front of me onto that outside ledge, if there were anybody across there, I would die because they kill you so fast. They're so accurate and so damaging. It, it, it's just a little bit silly. So you want to pick your time. You want to pick your, pick your moment, so to speak, so that you don't get screwed. And just keep, you know, taking dudes out and being careful of the guys jumping up because if anybody jumps up with a shotgun they're going to come straight for you and they're going to smile as they blast your face through so just be aware of that there's one guy in front of me here which is not too bad he's quickly dispatched of and then you can run pick up some ammo and then push onto this corner but be careful as you as you round this corner you don't know if there's any more of them left there's one right up there there's one to his left so just use the use the pillars and just eek your way around He's throwing a grenade. I wasn't quick enough to stop him. Which is a shame because it would have killed him and his buddy. But uh, I really like this Gmail weapon. This one with the red dot sight. It's a triple burst weapon and it's very accurate. It's probably my second favourite assault rifle on the game. My only real problem when it comes to any of the guns on the game is, is you know the sporadicness of how they fire. And this seems to be one of the most consistent that you come across. It doesn't have too much recoil. The bullets generally go where you point them. And... Um, it's, it's a powerful weapon, so get used to using it. But there they are dispatched. We can now push forward. We can now pick up as much ammo as we need to get. And uh, keep doing the, the uncharted thing. And the reason why that this level is kind of challenging is because there's, there's two firefights coming up later on where you're in big rooms, there's a lot of guys, and you're, you're not in the best situation to take them on. You're, you're trapped with Charlie for the most. and He does help, but he's not great, so don't think he's going to save your ass. Because he's just not going to. And one of them is a stealth section, so if you can do it stealthily, uh, power to you, I couldn't, so I just shoot everybody in the face. But... There's, there's a lot of rocket launches coming up and then snipers and things like that. So just be be aware that shit's going to get a little bit more escalated than it is right now. And that's the Rafika, which if you've played Modern Warfare 2, you'll probably remember quite fondly. And it's a good pistol on the game. It's triple burst, just like it is on that. It's set to the, the three-shot burst. And it's useful for two bursting enemies. If you hit them in the face, it'll one-burst them like that guy did. That guy took two. And... Um, 
It's probably my favourite pistol on the game, second to the Magnums, because the Magnums are super powerful, but the aimer on the Magnum when you when you go into the scope is just awful, absolutely awful. And goodness me, I'm getting lit up. That is a heavy. So, the first thing you're going to notice is the heavy's turned up, he's completely covered in armour, and he's got a shotgun, which means he's just going to stalk very slowly around the corners and try and hit you with it. The luxury of the shotguns is they have two shells, then they reload, so you can completely... You know what he's going to do. Once he's fired two, he's got to reload. He'll reload pretty quickly and you can exploit that, but he can't hit you from a distance and he can't do much more than, you know, get his shit pushed in. Because aim for the face, obviously, it takes him down much faster. As soon as you take the helmet off, you're generally a headshot away from winning. There's a couple heavies later on in the game that you can't beat up. He would have probably been easier to just beat up. But later on in the game, they'll just keep kicking you and there's nothing you can do. So if somebody kicks you before you get a chance to punch them, it means they're immortal. They're not immortal, sorry. It means they're immune to being able to, you know, get the shit pushed in with your hands. And, and this is a, a, a deceptively difficult bit, this. So as soon as you land on this first piece of cover, there's going to be three enemies that attack you. But it's all going to be in the next video and I'm going to go through it in that. So thanks for watching, guys, and you take care now.